Hello, and welcome to Dash Talk. Into the Block is an intelligence company that uses machine learning and statistical modeling to create intelligence about crypto assets. And this week I have with me their chief operations officer, Alfredo Torero. Alfredo, how are you? Hi, Amanda. Great to meet you and thank you for having me. It's great to speak with you as well, and I'm so happy to have you. Uh, first, please start by telling us when did you all get started at Into the Block, and more importantly, why? Sure. So we started a little over a year and a half ago. Um, I am one of the co-founders. I come from having run a, a crypto fund um, a couple until a couple of years ago, and then I met my other co-founder, who is the CEO of the company today, Jesus Rodriguez. Um, Jesus comes from a deep background in uh, technology and finance, especially uh, his field of expertise is machine learning and AI. So we, um, I from, you know, coming from running the fund and Jesus from, from developing, uh, you know, products for, for, for the blockchain companies, uh, we got together because we believed uh, that the market was in need uh, for better uh, intelligence and analytics, uh, you know, related to crypto assets. The main thesis, for the company was uh, twofold, right? One is if this asset class is really going to grow and become significant like, like others, like equities and bonds and commodities, et cetera, it really needs more analytics, more market intelligence than what was out there, which was basically tools for understanding a crypto asset just by looking at uh, price and volume data. And, right. uh, and the second one was, you know, this is the, the first asset class in history that is natively digital natively and 100% digital. And what that does is that it opens up the opportunity for a new kind of analysis that was not available for other asset classes. So just think about it, just having the information of transactions uh, and, and addresses recorded on the blockchain uh, is a very rich data set that you can use uh, with others that we use in the platform today uh, to come up with, with charts, indicators, and analysis uh, that are unique to crypto. So then let's talk about some of those indicators. Um, give us some examples of some of the indicators that you track. And also, why did, like, or how did you come about to choose each one? Sure. So again, we wanted to complement what uh, users were seeing just by, by looking at price and volume. So we don't, we don't discard tech using technical analysis, uh, okay. but we wanted to complement that you know, with, a, with a more holistic view of a crypto asset. So we started thinking, what can we do uh, that is interesting that, that you know that using blockchain as as our what we call first class citizen as our main uh, source of data. So when we first started, we had what we called uh, three categories, right? One uh, we call it financial, but it's not really you know price movements. It's mostly that intersection of blockchain and price. So to give you an example, one indicator that has become very popular, uh, we call it the in and out of the money. It really has nothing to do with for those options traders whether an options in the money or anything. It has more to do with whether current holders, uh, uh, specifically addresses of, of an asset, would realize a profit or, or a loss if they were to sell today. And right. what we do is we have all the addresses that have, you know, uh, when you analyze a, a specific asset, we have all the addresses that currently have, 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 you know, a balance. And we can calculate, when we go back in time, like what was the average cost at which that address acquired the asset then and mm -hmm. compare it to, to price now. Um, so that's, that's one of those financial quote unquote indicators. We have others like large transactions in the network. So any transaction that is greater than a hundred thousand dollars, we record it sort mm -hmm. of like to differentiate what's, what we believe is large institutional players, you know, moving, moving assets versus more retail investors. Then we have a whole chapter on, on network and that gets more to the nitty gritty of, of the blockchain itself. So hash rate indicators, transaction indicators, uh, average balance in the, in the addresses, et cetera. And then you have one chapter called ownership, where we analyze, as the name implies, the ownership, the capital stack, quote unquote, of, of the asset, uh, mainly by two views. One, in terms of concentration, are there you know small number of addresses that have most of the assets in circulation, um, or by time held? So are users you know holding on to this asset for more than a year, less than a month, maybe somewhere in between? So, so those those three main ones were the initial phase of into the blog, mainly on chain data. Mm -hmm. What started happening, and we, we I mean, I'm, I'm I'm summarizing here, but we have many, many more than the ones I just said. Today, the, the platform has over 60 indicators. But what started happening is once we launched those three categories, 
users and, and some of our partners started telling us, can we complement this on-chain data with, with other sort of information? So we launched a chapter on order books. So now looking at what is happening inside exchanges, we launched a chapter on social. Originally we were, you know, being data scientists, it was hard for us to reconcile with, okay, what, you know, Twitter and, and Telegram right. have an influence in, in this asset. But again, serving that, you know, 360 view of the asset, we said, okay, let's, let's go for it. And we developed our own models for, for sentiment analysis, what's being mentioned in the news related to a specific asset and whatnot. And lately we'll launch a chapter on derivatives, uh, mainly perpetual subs and, and futures, but uh, in the next few weeks, we'll probably be unveiling uh, a few charts on, on options as well. Fantastic. So I see that on the um, dash.org website, there is a dedicated page to into the block metrics. And so I wanted to know just a little bit like how did this sort of uh, partnership between into the block and uh, dash core group, the owner of that website come about? Uh, the reason uh, we, we did this partnership is um, the dash. Uh, it's funny, one of one of the of the guys from the dash core group, uh, at, used to attend or, or attend our webinars. We have monthly webinars. Um, sure. And and they realized that we had the infrastructure and the know-how to provide uh, some indicators that, that the core, the Dash Core Group wanted uh, basically for themselves to understand oh. growth, usability, um, adoption of Dash. So so they, they reached out and this was a first for us because uh, we are, are we have more than 50 partnerships, but it's mainly with exchanges and you know data providers like CoinMarketCap where we where we have our data. Uh, but it's sort of like a distribution sort of partnership. In the case of Dash, uh, they said, look, we, we know you guys have have this infrastructure and this expertise. Can you help us with with the sort of indicators that we want to track? Um, so that is so not surprising to me. Dash Core yes. Group CEO Ryan Taylor has been talking about KPIs, KPIs for so long. I remember I didn't even know what that was. I had to look up KPI because Ryan Taylor was always That's talking exactly about how them. that call went. We want we have some KPIs and uh, <laughs> and this is what we want to track. So so they gave us originally a, a very large list that you know most of most of those uh, requests were uh, extremely extremely difficult and, and and others were were difficult as well. But but we we took a crack at the ones. Uh, you, you know that that we could solve given given our know-how, and um, and and we started you know delivering those indicators to the dashboard group. Now, interestingly, uh, there was a point when when they started seeing the the, the indicators uh, that they decided you know what this is a community let's let's open it up uh, for everyone. So so two things happened there. One, uh, the, the, what we mentioned of, of you know having some into the block indicators on on the dash uh, .org site, and two, if you go to into the block today. Uh, apart from those six categories that I mentioned that every asset has, if you go to Dash, there's a seventh category called oh. protocol indicators. Uh, right now, that, that category has three charts, uh, and it's mainly to understand uh, the use of Dash, whether you know uh, the transactions. So for every day, we track all the Dash transactions, and we have classified them in, you know, is it a block reward? Is it payments or, or, or mixing or investment? Um, and the different uses. So uh, that is something that that the group wanted to understand, but eventually said, let's, let's open this up for, for all the community and, and now you can access it via into the block. Wow, fantastic. And just so everybody knows, um, all of these um, indicators that Alfredo was talking about, including like the extra customized indicators that were created for Dash in particular, are available via a seven day free trial um, when you start your account. I learned that because I started an account yesterday and was so glad that it was like, you don't need a credit card to just start a seven day free trial. So thanks for that, Alfredo. That's true. And, and also after the free trial, what happens is uh, we do have a subscription model, but for all Dash users and anyone who, who uh, watches the show, uh, you guys can uh, have a 20% discount by, by adding a coupon. Uh, just type in Dash 2020. Uh, and that's also part of our partnership. So we're, you know, this partnership has, has uh, taken us uh, in, in many different directions and, and it keeps, it keeps uh, going. Fantastic. Well, Alfredo Torero, COO of Into the Block, thanks so much for speaking with me today. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, of course. That's all we have for you this week. We'll see you next time.